Here we are and we're going to be discussing applications of quadratic functions, a more advanced approach. If a baseball is projected upward from ground level with an initial velocity of 96 feet per second, then its height is a function of time. That is, as time goes by, it gets higher and then lower. Given by this function, s for distance equals negative 16t squared plus 96t. What is the maximum height reached? Note, this is a quadratic. The leading term is negative. You're going to have a cupped down parabola. You're looking for the maximum height. That's K. The amount of time it takes is H. The amount of time it takes to reach the maximum height is H and K is the maximum height reached. So let us go there. What is the maximum height reached? Well, first we find H, then we find K. So H equals negative B over 2A. You have to know what H is first, as you'll see. All right, we have S equals negative 16t squared plus 96t. We could pull out a, a GCF, but there's no reason to bother. Let's go nine, negative 96 over two times negative 16, which is negative 96 over negative 32. Let us pull up the calculator. Okay, 96 divided by 32. Three, my goodness, who would have thunk it? So, negative over negative is positive. 32 goes into 96. Three times, it's going to take three seconds for the ball to reach its highest point. Well, they're not asking for that, of course. What we're looking for is K. K is what we get when we put three in for T. So negative 16 times 3 squared plus 96 times 3. And so again, we pull out the calculator. Negative 16 times 3 squared plus 96 times 3. 144 feet high, which indeed is the answer. I left the answers in there just so we all could be sure that we're correct. Although my math lab is not correct 100% of the time, keep that in mind. Still, it's nice to agree with their answer. So here we are. What is the maximum height reached by the ball? 144 feet, and then it starts to go down. Next problem. A toy rocket is shot vertically into the air from a launching pad nine feet above the ground with an initial velocity of 64 feet per second. The height, h in feet, 
of the rocket above the ground at T seconds after launch is given by this function. Now you have a quadratic trinomial. Again, the leading term is negative, so you have a cupped down parabola. But remember that the launch, the launch pad is nine feet. So the toy rocket starts here. And then it lands on the ground. How long will it take the rocket to reach its maximum height? And what is the maximum height? The vertex is H K. H is in the X coordinate position and K is in the Y coordinate position. And note which variable is acting like an X. It's T. So the time it takes the rocket to reach its maximum height is going to be H. And the maximum height is K. So for this question, the rocket reaches its maximum height after, of course, we don't really know the answer yet. This is going to be H equals negative b over 2a. And this is going to be, I should say h, shouldn't I? h. No. Oh, it is h, isn't it? How unfortunate. Okay, well, never mind then. k is going to equal negative 16 times h squared plus 64 h plus 9 where h is the number we're going to find up here and if my math lab is correct and we're correct the answer will be 2 so let us proceed Negative 16 is A, and 64 is B. So H equals negative B over 2A. That's going to be negative 64 over 2 times negative 16, which will be negative 64 over negative 32 which will be, oh, what a shock, two. Two times two is four, two times three is six. That's how you get 64. H is two seconds. We then take the formula and put in the H number for T, or for H as we've rewritten it here. Negative 16 times 2 squared plus 64 times 2 plus 9 equals negative 16 times 4 plus 128 plus 9. This is negative 64 plus 128, for those who want to do it by hand, you can certainly do it by hand, plus 9. Negative 64 plus 128 is positive 64 plus 9, which is going to be 73. 73 feet. That is K. And K is the maximum height reached. Notice that in both of these problems, we're finding the vertex of a cup down parabola.
how this is a little more complicated. Let me make sure that indeed I am recording. Yes, I'm recording and yes, my microphone and video are on. We are happy creatures. Okay, you can see I've already started this. Look at that. You're going to fold this eight by 12 inch. Um, what is this? A one compartment vertical file is to be constructed by bending the long side of an eight by 12 sheet of plastic. Okay, along two lines to form a U shape. And there it is. Where we have three sides, this side, this side, and this side. This side and this side are both X, and this side is called Y, because I certainly am not assume that three sides are equal. So that means, since we're, we're folding along the, uh, the long side, we're folding it up. Um, X plus X plus Y are going to equal 12. So 2X plus Y equals 12. That's how long this is. And solving for y, because we'll need to have x's if we want to solve, or if we want to get, well, you'll see, you'll see. We need to get y in terms of x, and so if I subtract 2x from both sides, what I'll get is y equals 12 minus 2x. And I don't know what that L is doing over there. Let me try to erase it. Very good. All right, so here we are, volume. Yes, we need to read this. A one compartment vertical file is to be constructed by bending the long side of an eight by eight inch by 12 inch sheet of plastic along two lines to form a U. How tall should the file be to maximize the volume that it can hold? Well, volume equals length times width and we see the answer there, but you're not supposed to know the answer. Well, I'm letting Y be the width and X be the height, and this length is eight, as you can see right there. So the length is eight, the width is Y, and the height is X. And Y, is 12 minus 2x. So this is going to give us 8 times x times y, times x times y, this is y. And now I'm going to distribute the 8x. V equals, all right, 8 times 12 is 96, 96x, 8x times 12 is 96x, minus, 8x times 2x is 16x squared. So the volume is going to equal negative 16x squared plus 96x. All right, we have a cup down parabola. So we are trying to find the maximum volume. All right, so A, well, let's see, we shouldn't be doing that. A, A is negative 16 and B is 96. So H, is negative B over 2A, is negative 96 over 2 times negative 16. We have been here before, haven't we? 
is negative 96, and I hear my dog coming in. Come on, Ava. There she is. Yes, yeah, she's my girl. Negative 96 over negative 32, so that equals 3. But what are we trying to do? How tall should the file be in order to maximize the volume? Now, if we wanted to find out, well, what is the maximum volume? Now that I know what X is, it's three feet, three feet, three inches. Good grief. That would be a really big file. We'll just leave it three. Um, I could find out that side. And I could find out what the maximum volume is, but they're not asking that at all. They're asking how tall should the file be to maximize the volume? Um, so as a result, it's quite enough to find H, which is three. It was also the easiest thing to do. Who would have thought that something that looks this hard would have such an easy answer. Notice that you could not assume that Y is the same size as that and that. Okay, we're going to have 3 plus 3 is 6. This is going to be 6 inches wide. That's, that's not great. That's not great. We really need another version that's more true to form, but oh well. We did it anyway. You see, it's the volume of the box is controlled by how high we make the sides. And it's quite amazing to me that three would be the answer, but it is. Now, Aki's bicycle designs has determined that when X hundred of bicycles are built, the average cost per bicycle, not the cost to us, but the cost to Aki to make the bicycles. The average cost per bicycle is given by C of X equals 0.1 x squared minus 0.3 x plus 2.566. Now this is very close to what a real life cost function would look like with a lot of decimals. Real life is not pretty. Okay, and it says where C of x is in hundreds of dollars. And the bicycle's x. Are, are in hundreds of bicycles. So we will have to remember that. Now, how, here's the question we have to answer given that data. How many bicycles, what color should we make that? Let's make it orange. How many bicycles should the shop build to minimize the average cost per bicycle? That's a different question. Let's look. The cost in hundreds of dollars and hundreds of bicycles is 0 0.1 x squared minus 0 0.3 x plus 2.566. This leading term is positive. Therefore, this, if when it's graphed, will be a cupped up parabola. Not drawn terribly well because I drew it. 
But here's the vertex. We'll make it a really big vertex. Here's the vertex, HK. And since it's the lowest point on the parabola, it's going to be a minimum point, And K is going to be the minimum cost. But that's not what's being asked. We're not being asked, what is the minimum cost? No, no. We are being asked, how many bicycles should Aki make? That's H. If, if Aki makes that many bicycles, Aki will have this kind of minimum cost. We'll be able to minimize uh, the cost of the company. Okay, so let's do this thing. We're going to find H, and that's all there is to it. Except we have to remember that if the answer is X equals 1, that's 100. Okay, if X equals 2, it's 200. So here we go. A one and B is negative 0 0.3 and H is negative B over 2A. So we have negative negative 0 0.3 over 2 times 0 0.1. Negative negative 0 0.3 is positive 0 0.3 over 0 0.2. Let us, well that's going to be 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So he should make half, uh, he or she or they should make one and a half bicycles. Very easy. No. Probably not. I don't want to get the half bicycle. No, no, no. This is 1.5. The number of bicycles is going to be 1.5 times 100, which will be 150 bicycles. Then the cost, B-I-C-Y, yeah, C-L-E-S. The cost will be minimized. And notice they haven't asked what the cost is. Could we find it? Heck yes. All I have to do is put 1.5 in for every X, and I could actu actually find out what their minimum cost is. Cost to the company. Okay. Profit for all of you business majors. Aki, and now this problem. The profit of a company in dollars is the difference between the co company's revenue and the company's cost. The cost, C of X, and the revenue, R of X are functions for a particular company. The X represents the number of items produced and sold to distributors. Determine the maximum profit of the company. The maximum profit, well, has got to come from the profit, so we are going to have to calculate the profit. We're not given the profit, we're given the revenue and the cost, but thank goodness we know that profit equals revenue minus cost. So, 870x minus x squared 
minus, oh, I better do that. There's the revenue minus the cost, 2200 plus 70x. That's what the profit is. That's what we're going to calculate. That is, that's what the profit function is. We have to have that before we do anything else. So the profit is going to equal 870x minus x squared minus 2200 plus 70x. It's going to equal 870x minus x squared minus 2200. Now, I distributed this. That was positive 2200. Now it's negative 2200. And distribute negative times positive is negative 70x. So I'm going to combine like terms and these two x terms, linear terms, are the same uh, kind of term. So, 870x minus 70x is 800x. However, I want to write this in descending form. 70x x minus 200. So that's a minus one right there. Now, now that we have the profit function, that is too long, it's really bothering me. There, much better. If we're determining the maximum profit, then we must have a negative first term on our profit. Yes, because if we graph it, we will have an inverted parabola, a cup down parabola, and the vertex will give us our maximum. So first we need to know H and then we can find K. Now, before we go on, let's read B. Determine the number of items that must be produced and sold in order to obtain a maximum profit. Well, that's what H is. So even though H is the second question, the first question we need to find is H. So H equals negative B over 2A equals negative 800 over 2 times negative 1 equals negative 800 over negative 2, which is positive 400 items. items produced and sold, which agrees with our answer right here. The number of items that must be produced and sold to obtain the maximum profit. I'm going to write equals H. Now this is going to be K. So let's look at how we find K. We take our H number. Okay, so K is going to equal negative one times 400 squared, ooh, plus 800 times 400, minus 
minus 2200. And that definitely calls for a calculator. Although I have to make it smaller, I believe. Yeah, okay, so. Don't give me a hard time. Okay, so negative one, parentheses, 400, parentheses closed squared, plus 800 times 400, 800 times 400, parentheses, 400, minus 2200, enter. 157,800, $157,000, no, $157,800 is what the maximum profit we have made the most we're going to make under the given circumstances right now under current circumstances let me pull this out and increase the size so that you can see it and perhaps write it down if you're doing that with your notes So, here we have our answers. You must remember, profit is revenue. The money you take in is revenue, minus the cost, the money that you, as the business owner, the entrepreneur, the money you have to pay out in order to buy the stuff you need in order to pay the mortgage on a place where you can manufacture or whatever it is you're doing. You're going to have costs. And hopefully your revenue will be greater than your cost, so you will have a profit. Here's hoping. This math could actually help you. I hate this problem. OK, there is a version of this problem in every college algebra book in the world. Uh, it makes sense. You know, the, there's a version when I was taking taking college algebra. Um, you had a barn and you had the three sides of a garden against the barn, right? I mean, coming out from the barn so that the barn formed the fourth side. That made complete sense to me. But having a rancher who's silly enough to think that because he's got a river, or she has a river, forming one side of the, um, uh, of the sheep and cattle pens, that that means that a sheep bah, or cattle, more likely cattle, won't just kind of step around and out and go for a little adventure. But as you'll see, this is what the rancher is doing. A rancher needs to enclose two adjacent rectangular corrals, one for cattle and one for sheep. If the river forms one side of the corrals and 150 yards of fencing is available, find the largest total area that can be enclosed. Okay. So 
This person wants to maximize their area where the sheep and the cattle live. Well, OK, and we're told how much fencing we have. Now, what will that fencing make? It will make this side and this side and this side and the length L. So 150, 150 yards of fencing is going to equal X plus X plus X plus L. So 150 equals 3X plus L. OK, that doesn't tell me much at all. However, if you finish reading again, it says find the largest total area, not perimeter, area, the largest total area that can be enclosed with that amount of fencing. If you use the river as one side of the corrals. So all I need to find the area of a rectangle is this formula, the length times the width. But I'll have L times, well, golly, the areas, we don't know what the area is, we wanna maximize it. But the width is just X, or, or the, the, the width, yeah, is just X. And the length I'm going to have to solve for. Okay, well, if I subtract three X from both sides, three X minus three X is zero. I'll have 150 minus 3x equals 0 plus L, which is L. So L is going to equal 150 minus 3x. So we'll put that right here. That's the length, 150 minus 3 x. So that's a minus sign. OK, so A equals 150 x. Oh, we're going to distribute backwards. 150 x minus 3 x squared, which equals going in the right direction, going downhill, Descending order, negative 3x squared plus 150x. This is a quadratic function, and the leading term is negative, which means we have a cup down parabola, which means we have a maximum. So everything is going in our favor. Well, we're actually looking for the largest total area. But there are actually two ways we can find it. So let's go ahead and find it. We need H first. That is, we need the, the width, the X that will make the area a maximum. It on the size of X. So A is negative three and B is 150. So H equals negative, 
ne yeah, negative B, negative 150 over two times negative three. So that's going to be negative 150 over negative six. Well, hmm, okay. Whatever, have faith, Barbara. Keep going. I'm looking for my calculator, there it is. We're going to have negative 150 divided by negative six. And we have 25. So our H is going to be 25. That's what X needs to be. Now, there are two ways that we can do this, that we can actually find the maximum area. One way, the way that is probably expected, is that you would say, okay, the max area is going to be the area we get when we use 25. So 150 times 25, oops, I'm using that, let's use this. Um, negative three times 25, squared plus 150 times 25. And getting out the calculator and reducing the size, moving it over here. Okay. Now, negative three, parentheses, 25, Parentheses close squared plus 150 parentheses 25 parentheses closed. Enter. And there you go, negative three times 25 squared plus 150 times 25 equals 1875. Square yards, right? It's in yards. Let's see. Yes, woohoo! There we go. This is yards. So the area, 1875, is going to be square yards. One of the hardest problems I had when I was a college algebra student max and min problems was trying to figure out what is H and what is K. And so I had to spend a lot of time thinking about it. The H is in the X position and the K is in the Y position. So in particular, the H is going to be the X that will maximize the K if you have a situation like this. So what is the other way to find the area? Well, if you know that X is going to be 25, X is the width, so that'll be 25, and then L, L is 150, minus 3x, x is 25, so that's going to be 3 times 25. So that'll be 150 minus 75. Which is 75. So now let's multiply the, the length, 75 times the width, 
25 and see if we get the right answer. We might not, in which will I will be terribly embarrassed. Um, so what am I doing? 25 times 75. 25 times 75. Same answer. <laughs> Let me make it bigger for you. Okay. Let's save this before anything terrible happens. <laughs> 